kind of a scoop to open up the show here today, kind of, because regardless of what uh, the former Aleister Black might have said, plans do change in WWE all the time. And it's not a cop-out, because all you do is you watch what they advertise, and then watch what they deliver, and you will see how often plans change. A lot. So, this is a situation where plans could change. At the moment, at this moment right now, the plan is to do a WWE draft on the August 30th show and the September 3rd show, which would be Raw and SmackDown end of August, first week of September. That is the plan right now. Plans obviously can change, but that is what they are looking to do. Obviously, they would run SummerSlam, SummerSlam is going to be like a WrestleMania-style show. It's going to be in a stadium. Uh, they're going to have, likely, likely, John Cena versus Roman Reigns. They may have some other big matches as well. They want to pack the place. They want it to make it a WrestleMania-style show. And then when it's over, run that draft, put people here, put people there, and away you go. The draft is is ideally, to me... The draft takes place on the Raw and SmackDown maybe a week or two after WrestleMania. You build everything to WrestleMania, and then you do your draft, and then you start over again. Well, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, because now you've got this WrestleMania Backlash show that they've been advertising. And if you're doing a WrestleMania Backlash show, what's the point of doing a draft and then going back to feuds that you did at WrestleMania? If they want to do it after SummerSlam every year, Fine, whatever. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me a little bit in the sense that they have been doing the draft in the fall and putting people on separate brands and saying that they will never intermingle again, and then they immediately do Survivor Series where all they do is intermingle. What's the point of doing the draft then? But that's what they do, and I'm sure they'll probably do it again this year. But at least this year, we'll have like two months of separate brands before we just put everybody together again. But that is the the plan as of right now is August 30th and September 3rd. And as noted, plans can change. They could do it earlier. They could do it later. They could not do it at all. But that is the working plan right now. Also, and it's not even a spoiler, but I know that some of you probably haven't watched it yet. So if you don't want to know who the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is, just turn off the show. But it happened like 12 hours ago, so it's clearly news now. The new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is, in fact, Shingo Takagi. Beat Okada to win the title in the main event of the show. 36-minute match. I have not seen the match yet. I presume the match was fantastic, but that is an assumption based on the fact that it's Shingo and Okada in a 36-minute match in the main event. What would you guys think of the show? Match was awesome, this person said. Uh, anyway, I can, I'll wait for your feedback. I'd be surprised if it wasn't, but, you know, weird things can happen. But Shingo is the champion, and afterwards he challenged the former champion, Kota Ibushi, who, uh, as Okada noted in an interview, Okada did an interview the other day, I've talked about it on a few shows, he just, he buried the idea of the, uh, dual title, because he was like, what's, what was the point? Which... By the way, the Okada interview was everything I ever said about that title and the new IWGP World Heavyweight title. I feel like he must be a subscriber, this Okada. Just spouting off all of my talking points. He said the double title was stupid. There was no point to it. Nobody knew what it was about. Was it a double title? Was it two titles? What was the point? Why weren't they defended separate? He didn't understand any of this. He actually said that the double title gimmick was the second dumbest thing that New Japan had ever done, or the second biggest misstep or whatever. He didn't say what the first one was. I think I think from listening to his interview, he may think that the biggest misstep they ever did was getting rid of the double titles, creating a new single title, and then throwing away the entire legacy of that title by starting over with Ibushi being the first ever champion. He buried that. But anyway, he did this big, long 17-minute interview where he just talked about all of these things that he thought were stupid. 
And uh, he noted, a great legacy for this first title. They erased the legacy of the old title. The first champion lost it in his first defense. The second champion, who ended up being Osprey, vacated the title. And now we are on the third champion, which is Shingo. And then Shingo has now challenged the first champion, who is Ibushi. We don't have a date for that, but that's the direction that they are going there. So that's what happened. I'll watch the uh, match tonight before Wrestling Observer Radio. If a Zoom meeting is three hours, the Zoom meeting would have only been two hours, except there's about an hour of people going, your mic's not on, Frank. There's like hours of this, Frank, your mic's not on. There was a day where if you would have said, Brian, you and John Moxley have a lot in common, I would have said, no, we have nothing in common. We don't have one thing in common. Well, here it is in 2021, and he's about to have a beautiful baby daughter on my birthday, in fact. Mm. He is also an author. We're both grapplers. And he hates Zoom. I mean, I have more in common with him than most people. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.